Hello everyone, I welcome you to this episode of Learning Physics with IBM. Uh, today, I have decided to record a video about uncertainties, but this time it is actually solved past paper questions. We shall draw these questions from physics, AS physics. This will be from AS physics. And basically, it is going to be physics 9702, that is paper 1 and paper 2. I hope at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to uh, handle activities, especially at that part of uh, manipulating errors. Therefore, I ask you to take this opportunity and watch this video right from the start up to the end. There are so many examples here which have been solved. The aim of all this is to make you confident. One, in dealing with uncertainties, handling them. Two, in uh, writing uncertainties to the appropriate number of significant figures, as it will always be required by the examiner. So to begin with, without wasting time, let's go to the first question. Question number one. At the period, the period, the period T of the oscillations of a mass, M suspended from a spring is given by that expression. So the period has been given by this expression here. K is the spring constant of the spring. The manufacture of the spring states that it has a spring constant of 25, so K is 25 Newton per meter plus or minus 8%. A mass of 200 kilogram, I mean times 10 power negative 3 kilograms, plus or minus 4 times 10 power negative 3 kilograms, is suspended from the end of the spring and then made to oscillate. Culture the period. Very fast, we are calculating the period because it's not part of. Uh, not the most important thing in this part. I will just simply substitute. So therefore, the period T is going to be equal to 2 pi square root of the mass is given as 200 times 10 power negative 3 divided by uh, K, which has been given as 25. All these have been given in SI units, so I don't need to convert. Of course, when I, when, I, when I find the period, I'm actually finding the most likely value. Therefore, that's why you say I have not included the, uh, the uncertainty. I'm taking or I'm finding the most likely value. That's why I've not included the uncertainty. So let me press my calculator. You can also pause the video and press yours. So this is 200 exponent negative 3 divided by 25. I find the square root of the answer. I multiply the answer, the square root of the answer by 2 pi. And this is giving me 0 0.56199. I will maintain many digits for now. 0 0.56199 as the period. Okay, let's move to the next. Determine the value of T with its absolute uncertainty to an appropriate number of significant figures. So one, we have already determined T, and we have already seen that T is actually equal to 0 0.56199. That is the value of T. But, so T has been given, or oh, we have already calculated T as 0 0.56199. Nine, nine. And the expression we are using is a t is equal to 2 pi a square root of m divided by k. They have given us the, the quantity, the units, I mean uh, the uh, uncertainties. k has been given as 25 plus or minus, ignoring the unit, 8%. And m has been given as 200 uh, plus or minus 4, but this is multiplied by 10 power negative 3 in SI units. 
So we want to find the uncertainty. We have already found T. We now need only to find the uncertainty. Because this is in percentages, the best thing would also be to have this as a percentage. So percentage uncertainty in M is going to be equal to 4 divided by 200. Uh, of course, I'm ignoring this times 100 because I know it will cancel for both. And when you press your calculator, that is 400 over 200, which is 2%. So now let's find the percentage uncertainty. Uh, in the lessons, we say that this constant 2 pi does not affect the uncertainty, but there is a root. So t is going to be equal to 2 pi into m over k, but this is raised to power a half. The square root is power a half. So because we have percentage uncertainties, we shall simply say that the percentage uncertainty in T is going to be equal to a half into brackets, percentage uncertainty in M plus percentage uncertainty in K. So this power is multiplied by the percentage uncertainties according to the rules that we studied in the lessons. So this is going to be equal to a half into a percentage uncertainty in M is 2% plus percentage uncertainty in K, which is given as 8%. And this gives you 10 over 2, which is actually 5%. But the answer, the answer required should be in absolute. So now it becomes easy to convert from percentage to absolute. The absolute uncertainty in T is going to be equal to 5 over 100 times the true value of t, which is 0 0.56199. So we press our calculator at this point, 5 times 0 0.56199 divided by 100. So this is giving me 0. Point, uh, this is giving me 0. Uh, 028 0 uh, 995. In the lessons, we said uncertainties are good enough to only one significant figure. So to one significant figure, this is approximately plus or minus 0 0.03. You will notice that this is three decimal, I mean two decimal places. Therefore, I'll write my value of t to two decimal places. So this will be a 0 0.03. Five six plus or minus zero point zero three. So that is uh, the value of t with uh, the absolute uncertainty to the appropriate number of significant figures. I hope that is easy and understandable. Next. Next is number two. The power dissipated in a resistor of resistance R is calculated from that formula, where V is the potential difference across the resistor. The percentage uncertainty in V is 5%, and in R is 2%. What is the percentage uncertainty in P? So I'm going to use the same space here. You want the percentage uncertainty in P? You can see there is a square, there is division. So this is the rule of uh, powers, the rule of divisions, where we said we add either the fraction or the percentage uncertainties. I want you to note that the fraction uncertainty in P divided by P is going to be equal to, because of the power, we shall have twice fraction uncertainty in V over V plus fraction uncertainty in R over R. When I multiply both sides by 100, even this side by 100, it means percentage uncertainty in P, this side, should be equal to twice percentage uncertainty in V plus percentage uncertainty in R. When I substitute, I have 2 times percentage in V, which is 5%, plus a percentage in R, which is 2%. And when we simplify this, we get uh, this is 10 plus 2, which gives us 12%. So it means... The answer to this equation is part D. Okay, let's continue. Next, number three. 
A micrometer, a micrometer is used to measure the 28.50 millimeter width of a plastic ruler. So the width measured is 28.50. The micrometer reads to the nearest 0 0.01 millimeters. What is the correct way to record this reading? So this is having one, two decimal places. And of course, this is also having one, two decimal places. What is the correct way to record this reading? Now you notice that here, this is in meters. Let's try to change this in meters, 28.50 in meters. We'll divide this by a thousand, and this would be 28.5 divided by a thousand. So this is 0 0.02. 285. Now, the number of the small, although this is correct, this is not correct because the uncertain has not been changed to meters. Although the unit is in meters, it's almost, it is having the same value, so that is not true. Let's also check 0 0.01 into meters. You divide this by a thousand. That would be 0, 0.0. This will be 0 0.001 times 10. Okay, 0. Point, I will just write two decimal because I have three. This is 0 0.01 times 10 power, I think, negative 2. Because this is 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's negative 2. So this one is wrong because this was not changed correctly to millimeters. I mean, to meters. Uh, this one will also be wrong because this was not changed correctly to meters. So we have two options. We have two options. This one, when I move, uh, I move two steps, it becomes 2.85 times 10 power negative 2. Yet this one is saying it is times 10 power negative 3. So it means already this one is, is out. This one's out. So it means our answer will be that. For that particular question. Okay, next, let's go to the next question. The sides of a wooden block are measured with the calipers. The lengths of the sides are measured as 20, 40, and 10, as shown in the diagram. The calipers can measure with an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.1. What is the percentage uncertainty in the calculated volume? So because this is a cube weight, volume of a cube weight is going to be uh, the length multiplied by the width times the height. Of course, in every measurement, there is an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.1. In other words, this is meaning the length is 40.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 in millimeters. The width is also uh, maybe 10.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 in millimeters. And the height is also 20.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 in millimeters. Because each measurement is, me is measured to that uncertainty. So what's the percentage uncertainty in the calculated volume? So since this is a multiplication, we shall simply add the percentage uncertainties, since the answers are also given percentages. That is, the percentage answer or the fraction uncertainty in the volume, delta V over V, is equal to delta L over L plus delta W over W plus delta H over H. Of course, I will just multiply both sides by 100 to change it to percentage. This side times 100. So the percentage uncertainty in V is going to be equal to, for L, that is 0 0.1 divided by 40.0. I don't need to change the units because I know the same units of the absolute is the same use of the most likely value. So I don't change the units. They will cancel out. Plus 
0 0.1 divided by 10.0 plus uh, 0 0.1 divided by 20.0 and this will be multiplied by 100 so at this point you just press calculator open brackets 0 0.1 over 40 plus open another bracket 0 0.1 over 10 plus open another bracket 0 0.1 over 20 multiply this by 100 so this is giving me 1.75 percent of course uh, when I look at the answers here this is approximately 1.8 percent so our answer is going to be B okay next the speed V of a sound wave through a gas of pressure P and density rho is given by that equation where K is a constant that has no units K is a constant that has no units An experiment is performed to determine the value of K. The data from the experiment are shown in the figure. Okay, I think this question continues to the next page. Use the data to calculate the value of use the data to calculate the value of K. Of course, this one is not part of uncertainty, so we just Calculate this very fast. Okay, so V, they have given us the expression V is equal to the square root of K times P divided by rho. From the table that we have seen on the previous page, each of these quantities has been given. So I'm just going to make uh, K the subject and substitute. So making K the subject, I have that V squared is equal to K times P divided by rho. So K is going to be V squared times rho divided by P. So we substitute. They have given us V as 3.3. They have given us a V as 3.3. So this will be equals to 3.3 times 10 power 2, they've given us V as 3.3 times 10 power 2 meters per second, so this should be squared times. They have given us the density as 1.229, 1.29, it is in SI units, we don't bother about converting. They have also given us pressure as 9.9 .9 times 10 power 4. Pascals, so we don't need to convert. We just press our calculator 3.3 exponent, exponent 2, but squared times 1.29 divide by 9, divide by 9.9 .9 exponent 4. So this is giving me my value of k as 1.419 as the value of k but remember k is a constant without units so this is 1.419 that is my value of k okay, let's see what the next part of the question says question 5 is continued and the question is saying use your answer use your answer in b roman 1 and data from the figure that is the table we saw in the previous slide to determine the value of k with its absolute uncertainty to an appropriate number of significant figures. Okay, so we have already seen from the previous uh, uh, slide that k, after making k the subject, k is given as uh, v squared times rho divided by p. So what find the Bayesian, so, uh, I mean the uh, uncertainty or absolute uncertainty in the value of k we see there is multiplication we see there is division and they have given us percentage uncertainties in the table v has been given as three percent p has been given as two percent rho has been given as four percent so 
we shall add percentages of fractional uncertainties. Remember, the fractional uncertainty in k over k, when I multiply it by 100, becomes percentage uncertainty in k is equal to, because of the squared on v, it becomes twice fractional uncertainty in v over v plus fractional uncertainty in p over p plus fractional uncertainty in rho over rho. We add the fractional uncertainties. Remember, when I multiply this side by 100 and this side by 100, it becomes percentage uncertainty. So we are saying percentage uncertainty in k is equal to, here we have twice, percentage in V, which has been given as 3%, plus percentage in P, which has been given as 2%, plus percentage in Rho, which has been given as 4%. So this means that the percentage uncertainty in K is 6 plus 2 plus 4, which is actually 12. That is 12%. So that is the percentage uncertainty in, is it 12? 6 plus 2, that is 8, plus 2, that is 12 percent. So that is the percentage uncertainty in K, but the question wants us to find the absolute, so that becomes very easy. Absolute uncertainty in K is going to be equal to uh, 12. This will be equal to 12, divided by 100, times the true value of K, which we obtained earlier on as 1.4. One nine. So we just simply press our calculator. One point four one nine times twelve divided by hundred. This is giving us zero point one seven zero two eight. But remember, absolute uncertainties are good enough to one significant figure. So this will be plus or minus zero point two to one significant figure. So since our value was given as this, we have again to write it to the same number of the small places as the absolute uncertainty. Therefore, this will be this will be uh, one point four plus or minus zero point two. As simple as that. As simple as as that. Okay, let's continue to our next question. The diameter D of a cylinder is measured as, the diameter is measured as this. They have given us 0 0.0125 meters plus or minus 1.6 percent. Calculate the absolute. I think this is the easiest question. Uh, how do we convert percentage to absolute uncertainty? So absolute uncertainty in the diameter is simply 1.6 divided by 100 times the most likely value, that is 0 0.0125. Press your calculator, 1.6 times 0 0.0125, divide by 100. So the absolute uncertainty here is actually 2.0 times 10 power negative 4 or many times the PCB students prefer to write this as 0 0.0002. Maybe you can add a zero to make it to significant. So that would be the absolute uncertainty in, in this measurement. Let's move to the next. In part B, the cylinder in A, remember in the cylinder in A, whose absolute uncertainty has been obtained, the absolute uncertainty has been in D has been obtained as 2.0 times 10 power negative 4. The cylinder in A stands on a horizontal surface. The pressure P extends exactly on the surface by the cylinder is given by that expression. W is weight, which has been given by that. Catch with the pressure. So we can substitute very fast to find the pressure. So the pressure is going to be equal to 4 times the true value of the weight, which is 0 0.38, divided by pi times d. And the value of d is given on the previous, in the previous slide, which is 0 0.0125.
Now the problem, the challenge here is that many times students get confused when they are substituting to find the true value of the of the quantity. They end up adding there the uncertainty and get confused. When you are finding the true value of the quantity, first leave the uncertainty aside and deal with the most likely value. That's why you see here I have only 0 0.38 and here I have 0 0.0125. So first, to deal with the true values in finding the quantity required. Remember, this is squared. Okay, so um, let's press the calculator very fast, and we get the answer: four times zero point three eight. It is in SI units. Divide by open brackets, shift pi times zero point zero one two five squared. So here we are getting the value of P as 309, 309 6.519. I will stop at that. So I'll write here 309 6.519. I did I don't want to round off here because I'm not sure about the next part of the question. You may want me to write the the true value with its absolute uncertainty. But then it is just telling me determine the absolute uncertainty in the value of rho. So we have rho as, I mean the value of P. We have P as 4 times W divided by pi d squared. Remember I have always been saying these quant constants do not affect the absolute uncertainty. It is only the power which affects the uncertainty. Therefore, we shall say that uh, absolute uncertainty in P divided by P is equal to absolute uncertainty in W divided by W plus twice because of the power on D, absolute uncertainty in B divided by D. Since we have percentage uh, uncertainty in W, I think it is easier to deal with the percentages. I multiply both sides by 100, even this side by 100. So it means now I have that percentage uncertainty in P is equal to the percentage uncertainty in W, which is 2.8% plus the percentage uncertainty in D, which will be 2 times, uh, we had 2.0 times 10 power negative 4, divided by the value of D, which was uh, 0 0.0125. Okay, hope D was in SI units. Let me hope D was in its SI units. It was in meters. So this, this now, of course, this will be times what? Times 100 to change it to percentage. So this is 2 times 2 times, okay, 2 times 2 exponent, negative 4, times 100. Divide by 0 0.0125. I added this to 2.8. So this is this is actually 2.8 percent plus plus 3.2 percent. And when you add this, I think this gives you 6.0 percent as the percentage uncertainty. Now the question wants absolute anyway, so that is also very easy. We just substitute, we just simplify from percentage to absolute. So absolute uncertainty in P is going to be 6.0 divided by 100 times the true value of P, which is 3096.519. When you press your calculator, 6 divided by 100 multiplied by 309 point sorry 3096.519 and this gives us uh 185.79 so the absolute uncertainty here you can even write it to one significant figure no problem so this would be two zero zero rounding off this to one significant figure if 
I don't know whether the next part of the question tells us to write P with its uncertainty. Maybe it doesn't. But if it was to tell us to write P with its uncertainty, you are going to notice that to one significant figure, it is 200, ending in two zeros. That means, that means, I will also go and write my true value of P as a whole number, but ensuring that the last two digits are also zeros. Therefore, if in any case, we are told to write a, uh, P with its absolute uncertainty, then I'll write P as uh, this to be a whole number ending in two zeros. When I round off this to zero, of course, this becomes uh, zero, zero, because this is nine to put, we shall add one here. So it becomes three, one, zero, zero, plus or minus 200. So you notice that the last two digits, the last two zeros are the same for the true value and uh, the, the absolute uncertainty. I think I've made that clear to everyone. Let's continue. The stu a student wishes to determine the density row of lead. She measures the mass and diameter of a small sphere. It is a sphere. The diameter is given. What is the best estimate of the percentage uncertainty? I will not waste much time now. So uh, since it is a sphere, we know that um, density is mass over volume. Density is mass over volume. They have given us mass and diameter. They have not given us the volume. Therefore, volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 by r cubed. We know the volume of a sphere is that. Since they have given us diameter, since they have given us diameter, we know that the radius is diameter divided by 2. So I'm going to substitute for the radius there. So the volume will now become 4 over 3 pi, where there is r, I put diameter divided by 2, but raised power 3. If I try to simplify this, it becomes 4 pi d power 3 divided by 3 times 2 power 3, which is 8. So it means the volume simplifies to pi d cubed divided by 6. I'm doing all this so that I avoid myself, I avoid first calculating the volume, and then because finding the uncertainty using the volume would be quite uh, clumsy and not, not advisable. I don't advise you to first find the volume. So let's now go back. We shall have data for the density is equal to mass divided by volume, which volume is going to be pi d cubed over 6, which is the same as 6m over pi d cubed. The constant 6 and pi will not affect the percentage uncertainty, but the power will affect the percentage uncertainty of D. So we shall just say fraction uncertainty in density over density. When I multiply it by 100, remember it becomes percentage. It's going to be equal to fraction uncertainty in M over M times 100 plus, okay, this is percent, plus 3 times. Fractional uncertainty in D over D times 100 to make it percentage. So the percentage uncertainty in density is going to be in mass, that is 0 0.005, divide by 0 0.506, multiply this by 100, to check with percentage, plus 3 times. For diameter, it is 0 0.02, divide by 2.20, Multiply this by 100%. Let's press the calculator very fast. Uh, 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.506 times 100. So this is 0 0.988. Let me stop at four decimal places. Plus. 3 times 0 0.02 times 100, 3 times 0 0.02 times 100, divided by 2.2. So this is 
272. I want the same number of decimal places. Let's add 0 0.9881 plus 0 0.9881. Two point seven two seven two. So this is giving me a uh, three point seven percent. So this is three point seven one five three, approximately three point seven percent. So that means our answer is is D. Okay. So I hope that is fine. Let's continue. A micrometer screw gauge is used to measure the diameter of a small sphere. The micrometer reading is that. What will be the percentage uncertainty in a calculation of the volume of the sphere using these values? So we want to calculate the volume of the sphere using these values which have been given. Okay. So, um, The micrometer reading, that is for the diameter, of course. We want the volume of a sphere. I've already established that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. They have given us diameter. Of course, we have now seen that the radius is diameter divided by 2. So the volume becomes 4 pi d cubed divided by 3 times 2 power 3. That means... The volume is 4 pi d cubed over 8, which becomes pi d cubed over, sorry, this is 3 times 8, which is pi d cubed over 6. That is the volume. So we want the percentage uncertainty in the volume. So the constant pi and 6 will not affect the percentage uncertainty. It is only the power of d which will affect. So the percentage uncertainty in the volume, which is absolute in v divided by v, or maybe I need to show that for some people. So absolute uncertainty in V over V, I will multiply this by 100 to make it percentage, will be equal to, because of the, of the power 3, this will be 3 times absolute uncertainty in D over D, and I multiply this by 100 to make it percentage. So percentage uncertainty in V is going to be 3 times 0 0.01 divided by 5.00 times 100. And when you press your calculator, you can press 0 0.01 divided by 5 times 100 times 3. So this is giving me 0.6%. You can also check. This makes the answer to be C, and I hope that is that is easy. Next, a micrometer is used to measure the diameters of two cylinders. The first cylinder is that, the second cylinder is that. The difference in the diameter is calculated. What is the uncertainty in this difference? Difference we subtract. So we shall say the difference in diameter, difference is going to be equal to the true value 16.24 minus the other one 2.78 and oh we we only want we only want the uncertainty oh yeah okay but anyway the difference is 16.24 minus 12.78 so the difference is 3.46, but we are not so much interested in the distance. We want the uncertainty. Note that I've got the difference is subtracting, but we say the uncertainties are never subtracting. So the absolute uncertainty in the difference is simply the sum of these uncertainties. So you can't subtract the uncertainties. So it will be 0 0.02 plus 0 0.03, which gives you plus or minus 0 0.05, making the answer to be D. Okay, next. Uh, 
our number next is saying the acceleration of free fall g the acceleration of free fall g may be determined from an uh, from an oscillating pendulum using the equation g is equal to 4 pi squared l over t squared where l is the length of the pendulum and t is the period in an experiment the measured values the measured values for the oscillating pendulum are given as those ones okay calculate the acceleration of free fall of g so this one you just substitute let's simply substitute very fast so g is going to be equal to 4 pi squared times l l is given in si units so that's 1.50 divided by t is given in si units that's 0.48 okay just press the calculator 4 pi squared times 1.5 divided by 2.48 so this gives you um this gives you 2 point sorry 23.878 so this is the value of the, this is the value of g Okay, so the value of G that we have obtained here is surprising. It is surprising, but uh, it is 2, 3.878. Okay, so the acceleration of free fall G may be determined from that equation, and it is given by, uh, or we have obtained 2, 3.87. Then the question is, Continuing, I think. Determine the percentage uncertainty in G. Percentage uncertainty in in G. Determine the percentage uncertainty. I think there is a small problem here. T was squared. Sorry, sorry about that t was squared i was wondering why g is that big so since t is squared this value is not true let's correct it that is 4 pi squared times 1.5 divided by 2.48 squared yeah now it makes sense so this is this is 9.628 9.628 okay so now we can proceed to the next part determine the percentage uncertainty in g percentage uncertainty in g so since we have already seen that g has been given as 4 pi squared L divided by T squared then uh, they have given us a uh, percentage uncertainties in L and T so we shall simply say percentage uncertainty in G is equal to percentage uncertainty in L plus because of this power to be twice percentage uncertainty in T okay so percentage uncertainty in G is going to be equal to a percentage in L which is given as 2% plus percentage in t which will be twice times um, 3 which is going to be equal to 8 percent so that is the percentage uncertainty in in g okay so then This is going to be 8, maybe 8.0 percent, just to have more than one significant figure. Then use your answer in B Roman 1 and B Roman 2 to determine the absolute uncertainty in the value of G. 
So absolute uncertainty in G is going to be equal to you convert the percentage. So that will be 8.0 divided by 100 times the true value of G, which we have obtained as 9.628. Three. So that one times eight times eight divided by a hundred. So this is going to be equal to zero point seven seven. And this is approximately plus or minus zero point eight or zero point seven seven. It doesn't matter. That is the percentage. I mean the absolute uncertainty in, in G. Okay. We can now proceed. We can proceed. The diameter of a sphere, a spherical golf ball, is measured with calipers and found to be that. The volume of a sphere is V, given by that, where D is the diameter of the sphere. What is the volume of the golf ball? So we want just the volume with its uh, absolute uncertainty. So let's check the volume very fast. Volume is going to be 1 over 6 pi times D. This is, D has been given as centimeters. And here the units have not changed, so I will not change it. 4.11 but raised to power 3. Pressing the calculator, 4.11 power 3 times pi divided by 6. So this is giving me a volume as 36.35, maybe 2 to 3 decimal places. This is centimeters cubed. Okay, then let's find the absolute uncertainty. So the absolute uncertainty is only depending on D. There are four uh, ab fractional uncertainty in volume of v, delta V over V is equal to three times absolute in D over D. So absolute in volume is going to be three times 0 0.01 divided by 4.11 times this value of V, which is 36.5. 352. So press our calculator 3 times 0 0.01 divided by 4.11 times 36.352. So this gives us a 0 0.2653. One significant figure to one significant figure, this will be equal to 0 0.3. Of course, this is in centimeters cubed. So it means we have this option and this, okay, actually we have only this option. So the answer is going to be G. Okay, next. The steel ball is dropped and falls through a vertical height h. The time t taken to fall is measured using light gates. The results are results have been given in the table. You can look at those results given in the table. The acceleration of free fall g is calculated from that formula. h is equal to half g t squared. What is the percentage uncertainty in the value of G? So it means I have to make G the subject. Making G the subject, you notice that G is going to be equal to twice H divided by T squared. So they have given us absolute values. So percentage uncertainty in G is going to be equal to percentage uncertainty in H plus twice percentage uncertainty in T. Remember, to, before you reach a percentage, you get the fractional times 100. So I'll simply say that percentage uncertainty in G is equal to 4H. That is 0 0.01 divided by 4.05 times 100 plus 
for uh, t, this will be twice 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.91. So this will be times 100 to change it to percentage. So let's find this 0 0.01 divided by 4.05 times 100. So this is 0.247% to three decimal places plus 0 0.02 times 2 times 100 divided by 0 0.91 so this is also 4.396 to three decimal places i'm now adding we are now adding 0 0.247 plus 4.396 so this is giving us um, this is giving us 4.643%. Okay, so uh, that means our correct answer will be actually B. Okay, next. A student measures the length L and the period T of oscillation of a simple pendulum. He then uses the equation shown to calculate the accession of free fall G. T is given as that he measures his measurements are shown. So those are the measurements. What is the percentage uncertainty in his calculated value of G? So still I have to make G the subject here. Let's try to make G the subject. Square both sides. We have T squared. This becomes 4 by squared. L over G, meaning that G will be equal to 4 pi squared L over T squared. We have seen this already. So let's very first find the percentage uncertainty in G. So the percentage uncertainty in G is going to be percentage uncertainty in L plus twice. Percentage uncertainty in T because of this power here. So this will be equal to uh, percentage uncertainty in L will be 0 0.2 divided by 87.3. This is times 100. To change it percentage plus 2 times uh, 0 0.05 divided by 1.9 times 100 percent. When you press your calculator, let's see what you get. 0 0.2 times 100 divided by 87.3 so this one is this one alone is 0 0.229 plus 2 times 0 0.05 times 100 divided by 1.9 so this is 5.263 then when we add 5.263 plus 0 0.229, this gives us uh, this gives us 5.492 percent, which is approximately 5.5 percent. So that means that will be our value. Okay. Question 15. The current I in a coil of wire produces a magnetic field where L is a constant. They have given us this expression. L is a constant. The manufacturer of the coil states that the value of L in SI base units is this. The current I in the coil is measured as that. The values of L and I are used to calculate E. The time the percentage uncertainty in the value of E. Since one is percentage, one is absolute, I will use percentages for simplicity. So I'll say the percentage uncertainty in E is going to be equal to, because of the square on I, it becomes twice. Percentage uncertainty in I plus a percentage uncertainty in L. You notice that the constant 
2, the coefficient, the 2 in the denominator does not affect the uncertainties when we are dealing with the fractional or percentages. Therefore, the percentage uncertainty in E will be 2 times I, which is 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.50 times 100 to change it to percentage plus percentage in L, which is 5%. L is 5%. When you add up this, let's see. So this is 2 times 0 0.02 times 100 divided by 0 0.5. 0 0.5, that is like multiplying by 2, then plus 5%. So the percentage uncertainty in this is actually 13%. So this is 13%. Okay, so I think that is easy and, and fine. Next. The sides of a cube measured with the calipers are given as 30.0 plus or minus 0 0.1. The measurements are used to calculate the volume of the cube. What are the percentage uncertainties in the calculated value of volume? So they are, it is a cube, all sides are equal. The volume of a cube is going to be side cubed. So the percentage uncertainty in volume is going to be three times the percentage uncertainty in S. So this will be S times uh, absolute in the side, which is 0 0.1 divided by 30.0. Multiply this by 100 to change it to percentage. So this will be 0 0.1 times 3 divided by 30 times 100. So this is giving me 1%. So the answer becomes C. Okay, next. A student measures the current three resistor and the potential difference V. I mean the potential difference across it. There is a 4% uncertainty in the current reading and the 1% uncertainty in the PD. 1% in V, 4% in I. The student calculates the resistance of the resistor. So resistance is equal to V divided by I. Mm -hmm. What is the percentage uncertainty in the calculated resistance? Since it is division, we shall add the percentages. So percentage uncertainty in R is going to be equal to percentage uncertainty in V plus percentage uncertainty in I. So this will be equal to V, which is uh, V is 1% plus I, which is 4%. And this gives us 5%. That is the percentage uncertainty in R. Next. A student measures, a student applies a PD V of 4.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 across a resistor or resistance R of that for a time T of 50 plus or minus one second. The student catches the energy dissipated using the equation and it gets 50 percent, I mean 50 joules. What is the absolute uncertainty in the calculated value, in the, in the calculated energy value? Okay, so we want uh, the absolute uncertainty, so that means since we have been given absolutes, the fraction uncertainty in E is given by that, this will be equal to twice, Fraction uncertainty in V over V because of the power in the power of V plus uh, the fraction uncertainty in T plus the fraction uncertainty in R. So we now simplify. Remember, we are going to multiply both sides by E to find the absolute. So absolute uncertainty in E is going to be equal to, now I have 2 times for V, 0 0.1 over 0.0 plus 40 1 divided by 50 
plus for r 0 0.3 divided by 10 I will multiply this with the true value of e which has been calculated as 80 so this is times 80 so let's press the calculator very fast that is 2 times 0 0.1 divided by 4 plus 1 over 50 plus 0 0.3 over 10 the answer is times 80 and this is giving me exactly 80 joules so this is giving me 8 joules so this is absolute uncertainty next in an experiment to determine the young modulus e of the material of a wire the measurements taken are shown so we have mass we have original length we have diameter we have extension and the formula has been given where g is the accession of free fall the calculated value of e is that how should the calculated value of e and its absolute uncertainty expressed okay let's first find the absolute uncertainty in e so we have um, the absolute uncertainty in e will be equal to 4 is a constant pi is a constant since we are dealing with the multiplication and division the constants will not affect the absolute uncertainty so we don't include them so we shall have absolute in m over m plus absolute in uh, g is a constant they have not given us the uncertainty in g so i will ignore it so this will be absolute in l over l plus twice because of the square on d absolute in d over d plus absolute in e over e okay so we substitute remember i will multiply this by the value of e so that i make it absolute so this will be uh, 0 0.002 divided by 2.300 plus 0 0.005 divided by 2.864 plus 2 times D, which is 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.82 plus uh, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.76 the whole of this I'll multiply it by I'll multiply it by the value given which is 1.61 times 10 power 10 let us see what we get Pick your calculator, press it very fast, open brackets 0 0.002 over 2.3, close that bracket, plus open another one, 0 0.005 divided by or over 2.864, close that bracket, plus 2 times 0 0.02. 0 0.02 sorry 2 times 0 0.01 divide by 0 0.82 plus open another bracket 0 0.2 divide by 0 0.76 you get the answer times 1.6 exponent sorry 1.61 exponent 10 and this is giving me um this is giving me four point uh four point six seven four point six seven i will stop on that how many one three 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 that is times ten power nine so this is what I'm getting.